conceptually a little weird. All right? So let's go through this. Let's rock. This is will be very easy. It won't take very long. You already know. Um, Ah. Uh, sorry guys. Okay. So you already know how to graph this. So let's graph this, okay? However you choose means you can put it in slope intercept form, you can put it in point slope form, you can use xy intercepts, I don't care. Okay? Everybody good? All right, so let's do that. I'm going to use um, x and y intercepts for this one. So 3x equals 24 and 4y equals 24. So x equals 8 and y equals 6. And I can see that my slope is three quarters. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So there is one line. Right? Now, this one, which I'm going to graph in blue, is almost in slope intercept form, isn't it? So negative three y equals six x minus 33 y equals negative two x x plus 11. So I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Oh, 11 takes me off the graph. Down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. And there's my graph. So I know my solution is 4, 3. Is everybody cool with that? All right. Now, conclusions that I can take from that. If two lines have different slopes, how many solutions will it have? How many times can two straight lines cross? Once. What makes straight lines cross? different slopes. Because if they have the same slopes, what are they? Parallel. Parallel. So will they ever cross? No. no. So if two lines have different slopes, then we get one solution to any system. So if they've got different slopes, they're going to cross once somewhere, right? Okay, let's look at the second one. Like I say, this is pretty easy. It just takes, takes a moment to see it. So let's graph these. This guy is almost in slope-intercept form, yes? So let's put him in slope-intercept form. 4y equals negative 2x plus 12. y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. Yes? Everyone agrees? Okay. Um, so then I would graph him. So I go up one, two, three, and slope of negative one half. Down one, right two, down one, right two, down one, right two, down one, right two, down one, right two. And of course, the other way going the other way. And there's my line. Yeah? Everybody cool? Okay, let's graph the next one. Again. If you're going to put it in slope intercept form or you're going to do x intercepts whatever you want slope intercept form so i get up to plus six and then i have the same slope so what does that mean that they're parallel can parallel things ever cross so will there ever be a solution? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep, thank you. So it would be down here at negative 6. OK. 
because that should have been eventually it'll erase but again point I'm trying to make does the y-intercept matter okay what's the conclusion if the slopes are the same and the y-intercepts are different, then how many solutions can we have? Then the lines cannot cross, which means no solution. Right? Just makes sense. If they have a different slope, they're going to cross. They have to cross. They'll only cross once. If they have the same slope, they're parallel. They can never cross, so there can't be a solution. Right? And then finally, let's do the last one. That one is 3y equals negative 2x plus 5. y is negative 2 thirds x plus 5 thirds. This one is going to divide both sides by negative 6, and I'm going to get y equals negative 4 sixths x minus 10 sixths. Would we ever leave that written that way? No. What is it really? Negative 2 thirds x minus 5 thirds. What do you see? They're the exact same line, aren't they? So if I were to graph the red line, which would be at one and a third, let's actually graph it because it's good practice. What do I have to do to my graph to graph this? Change the scale to what, Simran? Thirds. So instead of being one, two, three, what's this? One. One, two, three, what's this? Two. And then what would happen if I went that way? Same thing, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, two. So now I can easily graph this, right? What's my y-intercept? Five thirds, one, two, three, four, five. And what's my slope? Down two over three, down two over three, down two over three. There's the red line, correct? Now, if I were to draw the blue line, where would it be? If I were to draw the blue line right now, where would it be? David. Well, this little line, is there supposed to be positive 5 over 3 because it's negative 10 and negative 6? Sure. Again, okay. what is important here? The line is? The important thing is the concept, right? So yes, I made a smaller, fix it. You knew what it was, so fix it. Where would the line be if I were to draw it right now? I would be up at 5 thirds. And then what? Down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3, down 2 over 3. And what would I get? The exact same line. How many times would those, lines to, those two lines cross? Infinitely. Because they're right on top of each other. They never are not crossing. So what's the conclusion? If the slope and the y-intercept are the same, then you have infinite solutions. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do here, kids have a problem with this instruction. What does it mean to solve a solution? Or to solve a system? Find the x and the y, right? I do not want you to find the x and the y here. I just want you to tell me how many possibilities there are. Does everybody understand? So how do we find out how many possibilities there are? If the slopes are different, how many possibilities are there? If the slopes are different? One. One. 
If the slopes are the same, how many? None. If the slope and the y-intercept are the same, how many? Infinite. So let's check this one. How do I make this guy, how do I check his slope? What should I do? What should I do to check the slopes here? He waited patiently. Slope intercept. 2y equals negative x plus 6. y equals negative 1 half x plus 3. Correct? Okay. What's the next one? He waited patiently. No, this one. This is the system. Negative x, take away 2. Do they have different slopes? I should hear 23 people saying yes right now, shouldn't I? Do they have different slopes? Yep. So how many solutions do they have? One. One solution. Let's go on to the next one. Black. Should have been black because I touched the black button. But it doesn't respond because it's garbage. Black. And green. What do I need to do to the black one? 5y equals negative 3x. Not minus. Plus 9. Y equals negative 3 fifths x plus 9 over 5. Correct? Okay. Now what do I do with the green one? Eighteen over ten plus plus minus six over ten x. Would I ever leave this? written that way. No. no, what would it become if it ever shows up on the screen? There we go. 9 over 5 minus 3 over 5x. What do you notice about that and that? They're the exact same line, which means what? Infinite solutions. Why? Same y-intercept, same slope. And then the last one. We'll do the gray one first. What do I do with that? Pardon? You could turn it into a slope-intercept form, or you could just check, couldn't you? P to 4P. How do you get there? Times 2. Negative 5Q to 10Q times 2. 30 to 15. It's divided by 2. So what does that tell me? Am I going to have the same slope? But I'm going to have a different constant, aren't I? And if I have a different constant but the same slope, what do I have? Parallel lines. And since they're parallel, do they have a solution? No solution. Now, guys, I did this on purpose. Because I'm trying to get you guys to stop using one tool for math for all the math you do. Do you understand what I'm saying? We could have put these into slope-intercept form. But you don't need to because you can just check. Oh, times 2, times 2. Oh, that's not times 2. So it's a different constant. 
because only the constants were different. Do you understand? What if this was 60? Then it would have been straight multiply, right? And then they would have been the same line. Everybody good? Please notice I did not solve the system. Never in any of these did I get an X and a Y, did I? I just moved the equations around. Everybody cool? All right. Um, I'm going to move on to the, to the last thing. So there's some practice. You can do that later. But I'm going to move on to here. Because in the eighth grade, seventh grade, you were introduced to word problems. And you hated them. You still hate them. But there's no reason to hate them, especially now that you understand systems. It's incredibly easy to solve word problems. And here I give you a roadmap to solving them. We will start with the first one. Step one. Identify what you are looking for and write let statements to identify your variables. All right. So let's just do that. In this first question, read the question. The sum of two numbers, 176. The difference is 48. Find the numbers. What am I looking for? Two, no, 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 no. I'm looking for two numbers, right? Don't worry about the math. The first step is to identify what you're looking for, right? If I tell you to go to the store and buy me Uncle Ben's converted rice, you could go and do it, couldn't you? But if I told you to go to the store, will I get back Uncle Ben's converted rice? No, because you don't know what you're looking for. So don't borrow problems from the future, right, Ekdi? First step, what are you looking for? Two numbers, correct? Do you know those two numbers? No. So you have let x equal number 1 and let y equal number 2. Because you have two numbers, they're different, so they both get different, different variables. Yes? Does everybody understand what I did there? Yeah. Great. Step two, write two equations. And there's a hint. Each sentence makes an equation. First sentence, the sum of the two numbers is 176. What math is sum? Addition. So the two numbers add together to make 176. So x plus y equals 176. Right? What's the next sentence? Their difference is 48. So x minus y is 48. Now, what do we have there? We have a system. How many options do we have for solving systems? Three. We can graph them. We can eliminate or we can substitute. Would we ever graph? Why? Because graphing isn't accurate enough. We will use one of our two methods. Now remember, I said that one of those methods, you use the tool that's best suited to what you are doing. This is nicely set up for which version? Elimination. Why, Ekdi? Why and why? Yeah. They're going to disappear, aren't they? Yeah. Right? With what? Adding or subtracting? Do I want to do y minus minus y or do I want to do y plus minus y? Plus. So what's x plus x? Don't say x squared. Yeah. Good. Were you going to say x squared? No. Were you going to say x squared? Okay. And what's 176 plus 148? 274, 224, that sounds better. So what's x? 112. Now what does that tell us? Every single x is what? 112. Because 
224 divided by 2 is 112. Because of algebra. Because of grade 6. So if I know what x is, can I solve it? 112 plus y equals 176. y equals 176 minus 112, which is 64. And there is my answer. Now, guys, obviously, this is not a real-life situation, is it? How many of you sit around your house at night? I wonder if I could find two numbers and add to 176 and subtract to 48. That will make a difference in my monthly budget. I'm going to work that out. Do you think even I sit around doing that as a nerd math teacher? Of course not. But as I promised you, this does serve real life purposes. Real life purposes. Let's look at this one, because here would be a good real-life example. So all of you hate word problems, yes? But you don't need to hate word problems anymore, because now you have a roadmap to solve them. What are the two things that I am counting in that question? Chocolate bars and pops. Do I know how many chocolate bars? No. Do I know how many pops? I do, right? So the two things I'm counting are chocolate bars and pops. So I need how many variables? Two. What should they be? We could use X and Y. We could use C and P. Could we use lightning bolts and peace signs? Could we use dollar signs and ampersands? Could we use hashtags and asterisks? Yes. Hashtags, actually, of course, the pound sign, but nobody knows that anymore. So, so, C equals chocolate, P equals pop. Now, what do I actually know? Four chocolate bars. How do I write that in math speak? 4C. And what math is and? Plus how many pops? 3 B equals 530. What else do we know? Two chocolate bars. One pop equals 220. What's that? A system. And all of a sudden, word problems are super easy. What math tool, elimination or substitution, is that almost already set up for? It's almost set up for substitution, isn't it? Because right here, I get P equals 220 minus 2C, don't I? Right? Okay, so I have 4C plus 3, not P, 220 minus 2C equals 530. And then I do my math. 4C plus 660 minus 6C equals 530. Keep doing math. Negative 2C plus 660 equals 530. Keep doing math. Negative 2C equals negative 130. Keep doing math. C equals how much? Yeah, go whatever. How much is a chocolate bar? 65 cents. And then I use that to find what? How much is a pop? Which equation should I use? Equation 1 or equation 2? It doesn't matter, does it? Because you can put it into either one. Some of you will choose the first one. Some of you will choose the second one. And if I chose one of them, 
and you chose the other one, all of you would say, oh my God, I'm doing it totally differently than you. But you're not, are you? So let's solve the last part of it. 2 times 0.65 plus P equals 220. 130 plus P equals 220. P equals 90. And we're done. But it isn't. It's the exact same amount of math you've just done 100 times when you were doing systems. But it's not. It's the exact same. Is everybody good? All right. Now, I have held your hand through the first two. You guys look at number three. Go slowly. Work with the people around you if you need to. But just follow the steps. Identify your variables. Check what math is happening to those variables. Write your equations. Make your system. Choose your system. Choose your solving method. So I'm going to wait. You should have your variables decided on in like 20 seconds, if that. That should be enough time to decide on variables. What are the two things I'm counting? What are the two unknown things? Startup fee. So I'm going to say S equals the startup fee and M equals the monthly fee. Agreed? Is everyone okay with that? Could I have used X and Y? Could I have used Q and P? I can use any two letters I want. Now, after one month, so, they charge a startup fee and a monthly fee. What math is and? Pardon? Addition. So, they start choose a startup fee and a monthly fee. After one month, how many months has Jen paid for? One month. So, she's paid a startup and one monthly fee to equal 260, correct? Everyone agree? Okay. After six months... How many startup fees has she paid? One, because you only pay a startup fee. Yeah. Plus how many months? Six months equals how much? 435. What is that almost perfectly set up for right now? Uh, elimination. If I do minus, it's done, isn't it? Yeah. What's S minus S? Zero. What's M minus six? What kind of five? Negative five M. What's 260 minus 435? Negative 175, isn't it? Now what? Divide by? Negative five to get what, Harmi? So, if the monthly fee is $35, where can I put that M now? Any M I C. I'm going to use that one. So it's S plus 35 equals 260. What is S equal? Two hundred and twenty-five. I thought you all said you couldn't do word problems. I can. But it's not hard, is it? Once you do this, it's so easy, right? Yeah. All right. Now, guys, number four is tricky. What about number four makes it weird? Percents and money. And I put this question on here on purpose because this type of question is a real life example, right? People have money. People want to know what to do with their money, right? You go to the bank and the banker says, well, you could do this or you could do this. How do you decide which one to do? Do you flip a coin? Many people do. 
But can you apply math to it? Yes, you can. All right, so let's look at this situation. There's a whole bunch of numbers happening there, isn't there? But it's really, what are the things you don't know? How much he invested in how many accounts? Two accounts, right? He got an 8% account and a 10% account, yeah? So he has two accounts. So what variables should we use? Does it matter? No. He has investment one, and he has investment two. And eventually they will show up on the screen. Now I'm gonna do something weird here. I'm gonna choose totally random variables because it doesn't matter, does it? I'm gonna make that uh, P and I'm gonna make that Q. Everyone agree? Okay, what do I know? He invested how much for us? So P plus Q had to equal 2,000, didn't it? Right? And when you invest, you earn interest, don't you? What was this guy's return of interest? One of them was 8%. One of them was 10%, correct? How do I write 8% as a number we can actually do math with? Point, point 0.8? 0 0.08. So 0 0.08 of P plus, what about Q? 0 0.10 of Q equaled how much? 190. Now, is that a system? Yes, sir. What about that system is ugly and makes us want to go eh, decimals? decimals. So we don't like the looks of that system, do we, Harmi? No, we don't. But we listened to all our math teachers, and our math teachers told us we can change how they look because we're in charge. Yes. What are we allowed to do to that second equation to make it pretty? You could make it into a fraction. You could times it by 10. 10 moves the decimal one place. How far do I have to move the decimal? Two places. Can I multiply that by 100? So what would that give me? 8p plus 10q would equal what? 19,000, because I'm adding two zeros. Now, do I have a system? I do, don't I? What version of solution will you use? Because who decides at this point? You do. I'm sure some of you will do elimination. I'm sure some of you will do substitution. But it will be up to you. I am going to do elimination. So I'm going to multiply this by negative 8 to get negative 8p minus 8q equals negative 16,000. Then I'm going to add to get 18q equals 35,000. Q then equals whatever it equals. No, I'm doing math because I can't divide that in my head. But that's not the right answer. I did something wrong. So plus eight, what did I do wrong? Plus eight Q and then plus six oh, that should have been negative 8 because I wanted to get a negative 8P. Oh, then I got to add. Oh, such a dunderhead. Such a dunderhead. Um, that should be 2Q equals 3,000. What's Q? 1,500. If Q is 1,500, what's the other one? 
500 because we had to equal 2,000, right? Hmm. Yo. Because I multiplied this by negative 8 to get to 8p. What's q times 8? Yeah, but it's negative 8, so it's negative 8, right? And I'm adding what's 10 plus negative 8. Because I'm not subtracting, right? Does everybody get word problems? So, pardon? The hardest thing. Cordlessly. No, it'll all be there. See? Um, the point I'm trying to make is, really, was there a reason to be scared of word problems? There was. Is there now? Really? It's going to be part of your systems test, yes. What's going to be on the system test? Exactly. Systems. And you'll have to graph some of them, and you'll have to substitute some of them, you'll have to eliminate some of them, and then you'll have to do a word problem on some of them. I bet it's going to be a lot like the review assignment that I'm going to give you for homework tonight. All right, listen. Listen to me, please. I cannot stress this enough. Make sure you try a couple of these, okay? All these word problems that look scary are not scary. Huh? Well, they usually get harder as you go further along, right? So, please try these. Because what scares you here isn't the math. And then, listen please, guys. I've given you two pages of word problem practice here because everybody is scared of word problems. I cannot stress this enough. Grade 11 and 12 is all word problems. So please make sure you're actually good at this. Do a few of them. Tonight for homework, do this review. You don't need to get it done tonight because I'm going to, the first block tomorrow, I'm going to let you finish it and we're going to mark it. The only problem with this plan is it means you've got to write your test tomorrow. Now, I've just had an idea and I'm going to get this done quickly. I have an idea. So tomorrow there's block one, two, three and four yes I want to give you guys a couple of blocks to do um, retests right just just Amrit just let me get one sentence out tomorrow I've already said that I want you got I want you to finish and mark the uh, systems review right Okay, now we still got to write a systems test. So if we, and then we have a break right here. If we do the systems test right here, what if you did your whole review wrong? You're going to need some time to get ready for it, yeah? So what if I do this? 
retest in the middle block, then here the systems, then you get some time to look at it, and then retest in the last block. You want to put it right there? Yeah. Okay. I did assign the review for homework. Because none of you are going to finish it. All right. Okay. This is me not believing you. I know that. I'm well aware of that, but I've also been teaching longer than most of you have been alive. All right. That's tomorrow. If that's the way you want it, that's the way we'll do it.